We have a longtime nerd who's currently obsessing over the show Why Nona Earp. Anyone heard of that one? <laughs> and has to earn every single part of her life. Mel Melanie Scrifano is her patronus. <laughs> In her spare time, she co designs Why Nona Earp ugly sweaters. She also is involved with LGBT bands Deserve Better and is still bitter about the show Sweet Vicious not getting a second season. <laughs> it is Brittany Daly. Next, we have the co-founder of Fangirl Shirts, along with her friend, Rebecca. Together, they make shirts dedicated to celebrating and empowering girls and women. Sally lives in Maryland with her wife and three kids, who keep her grounded. Fandom has helped Sally grow into her better self, which is always a work in progress. She's definitely an angel from heaven. It's Sally Heaven. <laughs> And last, but certainly not least, with the strike that we just saw, a freelance writer for a number of publications, including The Hollywood Reporter, Tom Tom, and Razor Cake. Her writing covers a wide variety of subjects, most notably television and music. She's also the co-host of two podcasts, Buffy Erpers and Feminist Thrill Joys. Both allow her the opportunity to discuss many things she loves, which is to say, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Winona Earp, and smashing the patriarchy. What? Go for it. Not yet discussed on those podcasts is her love of licorice. It's catch up then. me, Danielle. I'm the creator of AngstyNerd.com, and I love Buffy Winona Earp, and I just like to nerd out. <laughs> Alright, let's get into this. Before we talk about the empowerment through fandom, we should discuss fandom in general. Now, fandom can be a movie, book, show, game, band, YouTube, or so, so, so much more. Sally, what was the first experience you had with fandom? Well... So if we go way back, fandom, I think my first fandom was in 1996, and it was around a musician, Jar Williams. <laughs> so this was back in the days when the internet was um, text-based email lists, um, listservs, so if you're familiar with them. So we had a large community of people who emailed each other. And we all got to know each other because we love the music of Darwin and the message from it. I'd say for genre fandom, which is, um, you know, my jam these days, but Darwin is also always my jam, permanently, my permanent jam. Um, genre fandom, I'd say my first experience was on the Buffy kitten board. Well, I should say the kitten board. It's the Willow and Tara kitten board, which was a message board, and this was also long before social media um, and mobile phones and anything like that. So you were logging onto it from your computer uh, at home, your desktop computer. There, there weren't laptops back then. Um, and yes, BBS's bulletin board system. So um, we wrote some fan fiction. We made some fan vids. In fact, the vidder, the head vid hedda here at Klexicon Fumatic uh, was also on the kitten board and made I know, because we looked you up. Cat. We did. Um, and uh, and um, that's how I met Fumetic, was through her <coughs> Will and Tara fan bids. So that was um, a great entree, and since then it's exploded. But those were my first two. That's good. Uh, so, Kat, how has fandom evolved for you over time? Do you think it's been beneficial or hurtful in the terms of social media and online presence? I think the first thing I thought about when I was thinking about that was I think that most people feel if they're not popular, as I was not popular in high school, uh, social media can also be slightly terrifying in that it's like doubled. You're, it feels like it's more exposed. Your unpopularity could be magnified, and that could be sort of hurtful. 
But for me personally, it's given me an opportunity to uh, sort of test the waters and see if I'm. Um, let me see. Hold on. <laughs> to sort of work on being the person that I am, really. I feel like I hold back a lot with some of my friends because I don't want them to see how nerdy I am or how much I love Winona Earp, for instance. And then when I'm online, when I go on Twitter or whatever, oh, these are my people, this is my family, and it feels really normal. So in that sense, it's been very helpful for me personally, but I can see how it would be hurtful or slightly terrifying going into those situations. Not knowing where to start, do I just hashtag Erper? Do I look for a hashtag Erper? And I think also uh, even Kevin and Bridget from Black Badge and also Bonnie have helped with that, uh, trying to make things more open and accessible. And can remind me of the hashtag that you guys have. Erper support. support. So for that for um, Erpers, that's as much as I can give. <laughs> uh, information on. That's really helpful, I think. Some people just, I go and I search that hashtag, or for support, and so Twitter, I think, just, yeah, Twitter has been very helpful. Yeah. Well, Sally, do you want to piggyback on that, going from message boards to now hashtags? <laughs> <laughs> Hash from high-speed internet. Um, I think that uh, the great thing about social media, and uh, especially mobile devices, smartphones, um, when they came on the scene I, about 10 years ago, I think, um, 10 or 11 years ago, maybe. Um, and then social media, uh, it's a way of bringing people together who have similar interests. And so you can find people who like the same things as you do, and they might live in your town, but they probably don't live in your town, and they might not even live in your same country. So I think that when social media came on the scene, and as it got more... Ref not refined, but expansive um, in how people can find each other, that it was a real benefit to people who have interests like all of ours, which, um, you know, geeky fandom stuff. And that's amazing. I have met some of the best friends I've ever made in my life through social media, and um, many of them, you know, live nowhere near me, and that's great. Um, you know, which is, but it's also hard because then it's harder to see travel. But, I mean, what what a world, right? I might never have met um, many of any of the awesome people that I've met without um, social media. So I think that that is the thing that kind of really helped fandom self-organize. Even Klexicon, the history of how Klexicon came together, uh, the organizers, the founders, the directors were all in the same, um, I guess, little niche of Klexa fandom after 307. They self-organized, I think, via Twitter, and they thought they would have a fan meetup about Plexa, and it turned into a convention last year that has doubled in size this year. So the the tool of social media as um, a way for people to find each other, but also as a way for people to self-organize, is very powerful. I think there, um, you know, there are also. Did anyone read Mindy Kaling's book? Is everyone hanging out without me? Um, you know, like. FOMO, fear of missing out, is a thing. There are documented trends in social media looking at Facebook and Instagram and, you know, pictures of people having fun and, you know, like the feeling left out. It can actually um, have deleterious effects on people's mental health. And, you know, we're here talking about um, that. I actually, uh, a while ago, turned off all notifications on all of my social media. And, uh, you know, I look at it when I want to look at it, when I have time to look at it, but I don't constantly get um, a beep in my face or my ear um, letting me know that somebody's having a great time, you know, which I know really has nothing to do um, with me, and I'm glad people are having fun. But just being able to be in control of it, I think, is, uh, you know, a key for me anyway, to keeping it a positive tool in my life. I'm here, and I've been seeing notifications, and I'm all jealous, even though I'm here. <laughs> so, I feel that too. I mean, I just flew in today. I was jealous all weekend. <laughs> I missed the party last night. I know. I saw the party pictures and cried a little bit, but we're okay now. You smell great, though. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I did.
But I, um, those are things that are about me. Um, things also about me are that I am uh, a wife and a mother of three kids and a lesbian and a business owner and um, you know happy and thrilled to be alive. And I think that it's what you said, Kat, about Winona Earp kind of giving you something to live for that that resonated because when I went to treatment for alcohol abuse, um, I really didn't know how I was going to live. And so I got a lot of help from a lot of people in a lot of different areas. One of them was the Dar Williams mailing list, and this was back in you know 1997, 97, 98. Um, math is hard, but um, you know I. That fandom gave me something, um, you know, to help carry me until I was able, uh, and it gave me something to live for too, until I was able to carry myself and to live for myself. And I'd say also more recently, um, similarly when, uh, you know, the election happened and just other challenges, um, fandom has been there for me when I've dealt with major depressive episodes um, or major anxiety episodes that have caused panic attacks. And one of the great things is if I need something to distract me, if I need something to entertain me, if I need something just so I can stop thinking about suicidal ideation, um, then fandom um, has been there for me. All the different fandoms and, uh, and the fans um, who participated and put out positivity and support and seeing fans helping each other is something that, uh, you know, helps me a lot. It feels really good when people all get start getting together and just spiral and people want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We have a little bit of here. Oh, I disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a lot of people just in the fandoms that I'm involved in. I mean, even just Someone sent me like a little bit that you were saying, you know, I'm having a really hard day. Like, I put my back uh, recently, like, really bad. Like, it was <laughs> grim times. Uh, and I, I didn't think I was ever going to be able to like, be like, a normal human being. And people just sent me criminal like this all the time. And I swear that really, just live bed, I was really bored, but that made me so happy. And it's amazing what that, something so small could do. People who don't even know you want you to be okay. Exactly. The fact that people, yeah, that you don't know or haven't met, you only know through Twitter, will take that time out of their day because they see that you're struggling and to even say something, even if it's a gift, just to try and help you feel better or to make you smile because I believe those gifts make me smile. No matter what you said, it's why Nona um, make me smile. It, it really makes a huge difference and it, it, is, it is very touching to see that, that people that you don't even know would, would do that. And I fully believe that herbers are going to change the world, and they are. And they're the positive light in post-election right now. I mean, yeah, for me, it's been one of the only bright spots as we are dealing with everything as a country and just even for me in my personal life. I think I'm going to jump in on that kind of deeper, kind of under the surface thing, if you all don't mind. Um, I think for me, too, especially fandom, it's, it's saved my life. Uh, I share this every panel that I'm on, and I think it's important to share it, and I was ashamed of it for so long, but I come from a very small town, and usually when you graduate high school, you go to college. That's the stigma around everything. Uh, I went to college for about a week and had such bad anxiety that I couldn't even leave my dorm room, so I dropped out in the middle of the night, packed all my stuff up, and came home. Um, and didn't tell any of my friends anything. I, I didn't tell any of my family members. The only one who knew was my mom. And I spent three months not coming out of my room, and I watched Buffy. <laughs> so all I did was watch Buffy. And then my dream is to be a writer, so uh, write for television. So I would write in my room and watch Buffy. Watch Buffy and write. And I fucked up the courage to get a job. No, I got it out of town, because I'm in a small town. I couldn't work in town risk someone seeing me, um, and I raised 10 grand and moved to Los Angeles uh, to pursue my dream to be a writer. And in that time, I had no family, no friends down there. It was just me in my dark apartment and just trying to make ends meet. I worked two jobs, and I worked from 
2 a.m. until 1 a.m. basically. I, I worked basically 24 hours with like a half hour of sleep just to make the bills. <laughs> that, that was kind of it. Um, so I'm not proud of it. And in my time in my dark apartment, um, I did attempt suicide just because I thought that was the way out. That was what I wanted. And every year I rewatch Buffy and something always gets me in Buffy and it's the end of season five when Buffy tells Don to live. So, that, I don't mean to cry, I never cry. <laughs> but that always makes me want to live. Just a fictional character that someone wrote down on a script, just those lines, they don't understand how much it means until it saves someone's life. And I bet you anything right now, if Buffy was not on the air, I would not be sitting here right now. Um, sorry to drag no. it down. <laughs> That's super cool. interviewed Emily Anders uh, a couple of times, but one of the things she has said consistently in our uh, conversations, and it's so true, if 47 minutes or 43 minutes, or however long an episode is, is going to get you to escape from your day, you're working as a nurse, you're doing whatever, then she felt that she did her job. So I think for her, she is aware. I'm not certain if Joss Whedon is aware, <laughs> or Marty Doxon, or whoever wrote um, that episode, but um, for sure, it feels like this person that we love so much and went on her as our leader, and, and she's for, aware. Yeah, for me, the Urper fandom really reignited that fire of that mm -hmm. Buffy left. You know, I still rewatch it every year, but I mean, the Urper fandom has just been incredible, and I, I truly love every single one of you guys, so. Um, yeah, I, I, the most important thing and powerful thing in fandom is, is relatability and representation. And we all know representation matters. It's on the back of her hat for a reason. <laughs> and I think once you find something you relate to and you hang on to it, I mean, that's what makes you love fandom even more. Um, so Kat, when was the first time you saw yourself in a character related to something on screen? I think the first time for me, actually wasn't a gay character. Everything else after that has been a gay character, a gay woman, uh, was Scully from The X-Files. Yes. Um, and I think it was just because she was a strong character and people looked to her for answers. They didn't go to the guy <laughs> for once. They went to the woman and she was, also I grew up Catholic and that character is, Catholic and sort of trying to walk that line of, of religion and science. And I'm not saying I'm a scientist in any way, but I think scientists are really hot. <laughs> I love the white lab coat. I wish I could wear a white lab coat. Uh, I guess I could. I should probably start doing that. <laughs> uh, so for me, that was the character I, she just was very take charge, and I wanted to be that. I was an introvert. And, I was an only child. I still am an only child. Um, <laughs> so for me, that was my the first character I looked up to. Uh, that sort of spoke to me. And then after that was uh, Redhead Number Two, which was Willow Rosenberg. <laughs> so, um, and I think I watched Buffy as a, a full adult that was completely out, but it's still. Um, I just, just watching her coming out, which didn't seem like a coming out, it was just, this is me. This, now I love this woman. It didn't feel like there was a bunch of fanfare, and that's what I wanted. I never wanted to be gay and in this little corner. I wanted to just be accepted and like everybody else, but, and she was happy in her being out. Yeah. I saw that myself. I was happy, but also a little sad too. A little, a little, a little sad. Yeah. Yeah. I also wish that I had her sweater. I have no sweaters. <laughs> I feel like I'm the only one, but I'll take it. <laughs> uh, and I mean, that's that's what brings us here too. Is those characters bring us to those fandoms that bring us to to these conventions? And you know, Brittany, what is it about Comic Cons that bring us here? And and what is it about fandoms coming together at Comic Cons? 
Um, so for me, where I work in my department, I am probably, no, I'm for sure, I am the only uh, queer person in it, and I work with all pretty much older, straight, white women. So being basically the only queer nerd there is a little bit difficult when we're relating to anyone in my area. Uh, so being able to come to Comic-Cons and hang out and being able to nerd over the things that I love and that people are here and they also love and meeting new people that I don't know or people that I've known on Twitter and haven't gotten to meet I think is great. I think it's a great outlet for us to take a break from our normal life where we you know, I know Kat touched on it where she said she might not be able to talk to some of her friends about how much she nerds over wine and her, because you are a little bit worried that you're going to come off a little bit too obsessive over the show and they're going to think you're crazy. Um, but, you know, you come to a convention like Lexicon and it's all the Oprahs are here and you can just nerd out 24-7 about it and no one is going to think that you are crazy for being obsessed over the show. You can you can just be in a safe space, I think, too. I know that I feel when I come to cons or into the fandom where I can be with everyone, that I am in that safe space and I can be fully myself without being worried about being judged or misunderstood in any way. I agree. I, I have a, a password at work and I had to tell the person, the technology person in front of it, I was like, set my password as winter is coming. <laughs> I just get a glazed look, and it's like, well, you know, I mean, have you seen Game of Thrones? And my phone screen is Winona Earp, and people are like, what's that? I'm like, oh, well, that's Waverly and Winona, and glazed look, so. My desk is, like, the only desk that has, like, a ton of pops, Winona Earp stuff hanging up, and is the most colorful. Everyone else has a few pictures of their families or their grandchildren, <laughs> and I'm like... I know no <laughs> That is my family, exactly. So, I also want to comment on this, and I don't even know if this relates to any question that was asked. Is I know that me personally, I have a lot of uh, sort of hidden anxiety that has that sort of bubbles up like right now <laughs> in this very instance. Uh, but also just coming here for five days. I'm, People think I'd be um, pretty gregarious and outgoing and silly or whatever, but I am actually really shy and this does make me very nervous. I can't believe I'm getting through this right now. <laughs> I can't believe I ate right before this. <laughs> um, but knowing that other people feel the same way, they're still, they're, they've powered through and they're like, it's so hard for me, but I did say hi to you, Pat. And that is, like, like someone got, like, go through whatever to say hi to me means a lot to me because I am that person as well. Like some people, I'm just even seeing like my friends here, or I'm just like, oh, they're my friends, but I'm still a little nervous around them. I'm also, I'm nervous sometimes <laughs> too. Yeah, totally. But whatever the level is, whether it's like zero percent, you're just gung ho and you're totally for it, and you could do this, or you're at like ninety nine percent, the one percent of you was able to just come here even just for like 10 minutes, you went out, you like saw something, you went to meet, get an autograph or whatever, and that's really powerful, so I think that's fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now this is for anyone, but we can start with Sally. Um, so what do you get from fandom and why is it so important to you? Oh, I, I get so many things from fandom, how long do you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I think of it as kind of in two ways in terms of the things that I get from it. Um, first, in terms of fandom, the things that I love, like TV characters and shows that have meant a lot to me um, over the years, I think about how the protagonists and the characters in those shows have been role models for me, um, especially in specific areas of my life where I wanted um, you know, to be able to see uh, a story of someone who dealt with something that maybe was like similar or the same as what I was dealing with. So, um, Lost Girl, uh, that show, remember it? Did anyone watch it? <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that show, the metaphor I think of Bo as a succubus, um, and then the rules around the show of like she's not shamed for her sexuality, I think that helped me um, recognize and uh, 
um, name and in that way take the power away from some of the internalized homophobia that I had thought that I had overcome when I came out, but really I think I had just repressed and shoved down. So Lost Girl was um, a really powerful show for me in that way, and that was through Bo, the character, um, and then understanding and reading more deeply about the metaphor of it. I think um, Winona Earp, so the character of Winona, she is a fantastic role model for me because she shows that it is okay to screw up it is okay to do things um, not the right way or non-graciously um, as long as you keep trying and you get up again the next day and you go back and you know you try to help your friends and the people you love and, and that is it. And I also have to say about one day at a time, um, you know, so many things um, that that show has touched on, but in particular when Penelope Stop. Spoiler alert, if anyone has not watched it, but you plan to, then don't listen to this part. When Penelope has stopped taking her medication, um, and then, you know, she becomes bedridden with depression. And seeing that, because I've been there, I've been Penelope before, and then I've had my family, and my wife, and my friends worry about me, like, how, what do you need from me, um, how can I help you, and, like, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Um, you know, or, and that, I think, seeing that on screen, um, you know, it just, um, it summed it all up, and it made it so, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the word is, like, it was, that's, that is what it's like for not only the person going through it, but for people who care about the person going through it, and how you can feel so helpless. Um, I loved it when Lydia was talking to the priest and said, I don't know how to help her. And he said, you can't fix her, you can just love her while she fixes herself. And that's true. It's like, it's like the old joke, how many therapists does it take to change a light bulb? Only one, but the therapist, or the light bulb has to want to change. <laughs> um, you know, so I think like role models and stories, like this is how we learn about ourselves. Um, you know, I get and get ideas and roadmaps for our, our minds. Um, and television is, uh, whether it's 20, 30 minutes or 42 minutes, uh, if it's done well, then it resonates in our hearts. I think, you know, for fandom, when you're talking about like the people who gather together around the thing they love, that's community. People, we are humans. Um, unless there are any Cylons here, but most of us are humans, yes, and um, so um, I have a great toaster oven though, so no shade on the Cylons, but people who are coming together um, to form community, we like, we're social beings um, by and large, like there's a spectrum of people who want to be social, but people get together um, you know, around things they like to find communities, you know, I think the Herber fandom has said find your tribe, like find the people who love the things you love and get together with them. We all want to be part of something and um, being part of something great is even better than just being part of something that's boring. <laughs> my family. I love my mom. And the rest of my family is just whatever. 
but that my family is not my family. This is my family, and I've had, like I said, I've had other fandoms that I've been interested in, Buffy, and I mean, I, I can't think of what else, honestly, I can't think of what else, X-Files, I guess, but this has changed my life, and it's changed my life so much for the better. I think I'm a better human being, and artists make me want to be better. They want me, they make, I want to write better. I want to be better. I wanted to be good for you guys right here, right now. I wanted to say something that resonated with you, and I still have, like, 16 more minutes to do that, so. <laughs> if I haven't yet, give me 16 more minutes, so. That's all I want to say. Give up that. on this one. What is your advice for people in fandoms who want to join another fandom, or maybe someone who's never joined a fandom before but wants to maybe on Twitter, or what's your advice for those people? I can only speak for being an Erper in the Erper fandom. Um, I know Bonnie, Virgin, and Kevin have done really great in the last few months with having those hashtags. Um, what is it? Is it Erper Greet? Erper Greet. Erper Greet. So if you're a new Erper, because um, I know that people were getting kind of lost in the shuffle because the fandom has grown so much from season one to season two and now coming into season three. Um, so I know creating that hashtag has helped a lot because I'll see stuff come up on my feed where people mentioned, I just joined Twitter, I'm super into Winona Earp, and they use the hashtag and they, they just want to find Earpers to talk to. And I'll constantly see people that uh, will quote it, they'll retweet it, um, I know we'll bring it to Bonnie or Kevin and their Bridget's attention so then um, to kind of get them engaged. Uh, but just just getting engaged and getting out there, going out and finding them on social media. Um, I know for me, for season one, I did not know that live tweeting was a thing. I didn't know that fandom was really a thing. I was watching retroactively for probably about the first half of season one due to my job schedule. Um, what really helped me was how interactive the cast was, even uh, retroly. Uh, so even if I was watching two days after and I would be on the hashtag or tag one of them, they were really great at still responding or liking. And that helped keep me engaged. Uh, and then I just ended up finding Bonnie's page and from there just would jump in and see Erpers talking and I would chime in. And everyone's really, really great in that fandom uh, with, they don't have a problem, you jump into a conversation to add in, you're, you're in that thread. and. They will, they will talk back to you and everything, um, or Bonnie will definitely go through or Kevin bring it to people's attention, and people are really great about jumping in and being inclusive. So, um, but yeah, I can only speak for that fandom, and just, even if you're shy or hesitant, just put a tweet out there, and someone, someone will get back to you and reach out to you, and from there, it's just gonna grow, and you're just gonna meet more and more herbers through that, and then you're gonna come to a con, and you're gonna get to meet even more herbers from there. Sally, do you want to add anything? I'll just add, um, if you're entering a new fandom, be who you are. Um, have an open heart. The more you give, the more you get. And I mean that specifically in terms of friendliness and responsiveness and kindness that you put out there. The more stuff like that that you put out there, the more it's going to be reflected. Not only back at you, but reflected like a prism, refracted um, to other people. I will, so those are the, the positive things. I'd also say um, attention and validation from the actors and the writers and the showrunners is awesome and super cool, um, but don't let it become the thing that you live for um, because those people are also like quite busy and if your if the positivity of your day will hinge on whether or not a certain person um, sees your tweet uh, or or likes it um, it's just not possible for that to uh, to happen all the time so expectations I'd say like try not to have them the fewer expectations you have for anything whatever it is um, experience or whatever then the better the actual uh, the actual experience or thing will be. So, you know, open minds, open hearts. Why do we smile? <laughs> I, 
I don't have any feedback. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still getting all my tears from the floor. Right. Right. All right, the last question for all of you guys is what has fandom inspired you guys to do? What empowerment has it given you? <laughs> I'll, I'll start with that. Um, for me personally, like I said, I touched on it briefly. Uh, writing, like, I felt that I loved the subject so much of Golden Earth that I could write about it with heart and it would, it would show us something pretty special. So, for me, the first article I wrote was how Buffy was, um, Kind of related to, or not, what on earth was related to Buffy, and that for me that changed my life. I think Kevin and I now do a Buffy or first podcast, and that's how I got into the Buffy or the one on earth fandom. And then I did one on the feminism of one on earth and talking to those. I talked to Emily and Kat and Dom and Melanie. And they changed me. Like just those hour conversations, they were so passionate about it, and it made me want to do better. That show makes me want to be better. It makes me want to write better. Makes me want to hug better. Um, so yeah, for me, that's writing for sure. That's how it's empowering. You give excellent thoughts, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to celebrate allies, um, you know, who are amazing. And so we, this is our company that, you know, we found it together. It is not about us. It is about you. It is about all of us who are in this room and who are at Plexicon and who are in fandom all over the world who need something, who want something, um, you know, to go out and see themselves reflected back at them. Wandering around Plexicon and seeing you know, all these shirts, like shirts that we, Rebecca and I talked about, we love to wear this. Um, you know, and then now we are wearing it and other people are wearing it too. It's like every time looking at it, it's like a hug. Um, one of the things that we talked about early on when Fangirl Shirts was just a dream was wouldn't it be great if at cons we could um, get people together to do a fun run? And uh, it sounds like a lot of work. Well, it was. And then, <laughs> but we had, um, you know, I think a hundred people participated in the very first fun run here in Clemson, and it was amazing. Uh, fandom has also inspired me to write. Back in 2004, I started writing fan fiction about Buffy, about Willow and Tara specifically. And then just this year, um, I submitted an original story about fandom to the Sapphire Books uh, anthology of Plexicon, and it's been published. And <laughs> the story is all about fandom um, and cons and cosplay and stuff, and you know <laughs> what happens when you're you can't 
find your phone or it doesn't work for some reason. And uh, yikes. I mean, and then and finally, has also inspired me just to be a better person. Um, you know, the life of Carmel Arsford is that we need each other better. And um, I try to be a better friend. I try to be a better parent. And I try to be a better spouse every day because of the examples that I see and of the people who I interact with. wanting to be that better person and, and seeing the fandom that, that makes you just, just want to be that and, um, and giving back. So, I mean, even for me, if giving back is seeing someone that is having a hard day because I've been through that and having people be there to support me and just trying to be there to support them as much as possible. Um, or if someone is a comic can't, trying to snag any of the wine on or merch or anything like that and try and send stuff out to, to people who either can't get here because of location or due to funds they can't be here, just trying to, to do that for them and give back to them just because they don't have that opportunity like some of us get to have. Um, and being part of LGBT fans has been uh, very amazing. Uh, I was able to jump on with them post 307 uh, out of 100 uh, and be able to work with them and help them kind of uh, connect with Winona Earp and the cast and uh, Emily and everything who, as we all know, is so on board with being allies and that great representation. So being able to be that connection to, to help connect those two together and uh, just just watch that organization flourish that is nonprofit for the Trevor Project. And then watching Winona Earp be able to just show us all how amazing they are as allies and supporting this community uh, as they do since they've been here, what, second year now? In Plexicon and just doing as much as they can to show how much they support and love us as a community and as people. I just want to go for it. Is that the people that are, these community are, but they're donating time, money. I. This is not me saying that I've given so much, but I have given so much money. Just like friends are trying to get to Clexicon. Here's some money. Here's a little bit. Um, Caporell wants to for the Humane Society. It's like give your money to this. People are creating art and donating. They're doing all this, so much of their time, and then whatever money they make from it, they're giving to amazing organizations. I. Where can you find people like that, just out in the world? And they're all right here, this one little group, and you're able to just find them in fandom. I don't know. People can slash fandom, whatever. Fuck that money. People are really <laughs> Back. Who wants more swag? One more. 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 One more